Guys, I'm Tony Bell, you and here is my Q&A social chat. All the questions have come from social media, so fire a fucking way. It would be intimidating, if I'm being totally honest, because there's no one around. It would be like, it would be like fighting, I think in the amateurs again, you know, the social clubs that you fought in. Uh, it's just that kind of atmosphere. It's intimidating because it's just you and him. You know, you, you've got no energy to feed off anyone else. There's no atmosphere. There's no... And that's how it will be. But don't get me wrong, an atmosphere will pick up and it will seem very real very quickly once you get punched in the face. Katie Taylor's just a phenomenon. Uh, this pursuing rematch is on everyone's lips. Everyone wants to see it. It's a brilliant fight. Credit to both the fighters for taking it because they didn't have to. Uh, and, and, and you know what? A lot of credit should go to Eddie Hearn because he's risking, you know, his, his prize asset, one of his prize assets here. He really is, and she's up against it. So she had it all. She has it all to prove after the first fight. I am actually one of the very few thought she won the first fight. I thought her quality in the fight was better. Uh, but a lot of people think I was wrong and thought I was being biased because she's a matchroom fighter. I couldn't care if she's a matchroom fighter or not. I just think she's the best female fighter on the planet. Uh, well, it's her or Clarissa, Clarissa Shields, in my opinion. And that's the one that yeah, everyone would like to see here v Clarissa Shields, if our catchweight can be agreed or whatever have you. Personally, would I risk it? Mm, I don't know. There's, there's an, he's someone who's just always took risks his whole career and, and it just comes naturally to him. Would I personally do it? I don't know. You have to stay in shape. You have to take a fight. So I suppose, yes, I would. But uh, I just think styles make fights and Pavekin's perfectly matched for Dillian White. I just think... Dillian White blasts through. I really do. I can't see any other outcome besides Dillian White stopping Alexander Bevecchio. And people will say, how do you possibly come to that uh, conclusion analogy? I just think Styles make fights. Dillian is a big, big boy, mate. He's a big, heavy lump. And, and Pavekin is actually shrinking. <laughs> he really is in front of your eyes. He's going smaller. And I actually think he's becoming more vulnerable. Uh, the Pavekin now is not the Pavekin of old. So, yes, I would take it if I was Dillian. Jordan Gill's probably one of the best athletes I've ever trained alongside. Super diligent, perfect in preparation, brilliant in the gym. Uh, he just prepares so perfectly. Everything about the way he prepares is perfection. It really is. Even his cooking's brilliant. Uh, I've lived in camp with him, and and he's just in Chicago, and he's he's fantastic. You know, he was a. Uh, one of my roommates in the apartment, and I wouldn't, as Dave Little Legs will tell you, I don't room with anyone. I usually have a place to myself and that's it, but I roomed with my coach and Jordan Gill on camp. And uh, he was just exemplary. He was brilliant, mate. So someone who far surpassed my expectations of myself and I was the one of the most diligent I've ever come across. I was driven. Uh, all he's got to do now is transfer that gym work over to the ring on fight night, because what he does in the gym is phenomenal. The kid's got it all. So I just want to see him exchange that over to, the, to fight night uh, and he, he'll do it. You know, he's shown in glimpses against Ryan Doyle what he's capable of. If you see what I've seen, everyone's going to be superly impressed with, with Jordan Gill. <laughs> Sasha's just got to do what she's been doing her whole career. She's got to go in there, mix it up and make it rough and ready for Harper. Uh, Harper's a, a quality kid and she's got youth on her side. Uh, it can be. It's going to be tough for Tasha. You know, there's no easy way of winning this fight. It's going to be hard. There's going to be some tough moments. But Tasha is someone who can persevere. Tasha is someone who can punch, and you know she has the ability to cause the upset here. I really do believe that. The person who hit me the hardest was David Hay. Sparred him with him one time. He hit me with an uppercut uh, many, many years ago, and I genuinely believe I thought he burst my skull. He hit me that hard. Uh, the fucker can really punch, and that was with 16 or 18 ounce gloves on the head guard on. Uh, I remember me back leg kicking out like a donkey for no reason and saying to him, Good shot. <laughs> Got a couple of boys uh, Jazza Dickens, Thomas Art, Craig Glover, Meshack Spear, and another guy who I haven't confirmed yet, but I'm, I'm trying to help out at the minute. But I will confirm when it's, when it's available to do so. Uh, I just want to help them. I just want to get them out and get them, give them opportunities that they deserve. I want all my fighters. I don't want to manage guys. I want to help them. And I want to stop guys ripping them off and taking the money that they don't deserve. So I'm looking after them purely to get them to a position of importance, get their title behind them, get them to a place where 
they need it by the boxing world. So the only way you need it by boxing is when you hold something valuable. That's a title of some kind. Whether the British Commonwealth area, I don't give a shit. Just get a title and make yourself relevant. I want to get them to a position of relevance, and then I want them to manage themselves. And that's what I'm trying to do: make self-managed boxers as fast as I can, give them the opportunities to do. It. I don't want. I don't financially want to gain from it. I just want to help them because the game is very, very tough, and there's some real sharks and fucking demons involved in boxing world. I'm, I was very fortunate that. In the second half of my career, I came into this outfit here at Matchroom. Honest, loyal people. That's the all that matters. I might not have always got what I wanted off these gobshites in here, but what I did get, what I always did get was honesty and loyalty. And they were the only two things I cared about. So by me coming back here and working alongside them and working with them or whatever way you want to put it for them, worked with at all the same to me, I don't give a shit, but I'm just trying to help the fighters now. And, and if I can help them by giving them a little bit of advice or creating an opportunity or making a little path for them, then so be it, I'll do it because I enjoy working alongside them. I don't have many friends left in the world. Uh, I class long legs as, as a friend. Frank as one of the lads is a good friend. So, you know, a number of them, Barry is someone who, who I've grown fond of over the years. Uh, it's great being here. And I just want to provide the lads with the opportunities. Thomas Whitaker Hart will be out early in September. Craig Glover will be out soon as well. Uh, Jazza Dickens is in the golden contract final, uh, which I expect them fully expect them to win. And Meshach Spear will have a date announced very, very soon. So, my plan is to get all the guys out before October. 175, the hardest they ever got. Chilemba won, Stevenson, the hardest they ever got. Uh, no food for two days, ice cubes and saunas. Wasn't nice. One of the most important. I'd, uh, I'd made the movie Creed. I just defeated the Welshman. Well, I defeated the Welshman in the. Brrr, I think it was the October or November the year before. Went and done the movie Creed. Came back from Creed. No one cared about me. Because when you make a movie, it then takes six months to produce, make, get ready, and all stuff like that. So everyone knew I was going to be in the new Creed movie, but no one had actually seen it. I was just, I came back from Philadelphia living there, and no one cared because I was in the worst fight ever with the Welshman. Uh, I cared because I beat him. Whoopie fucking do. But uh, Eddie didn't want to know because he was uh, he was absolutely disgusted in the way the fight went. But once again, his loyalty stood by me, gave me opportunities. A, a 10 rounder against Vinka Bakarin, who was stopped in Liverpool in the final round. And then uh, a fight, an eight-round fight against the Southport in Kila Coolis. Two warmer fights, and then he threw me in the wall to the Wolves with the Masternak fight. And the Masternak fight, I'm not going to lie, was probably the making of me, a cruiserweight. Masternak was a former European champion, former world title challenger, again, for the WBC title. Really good fighter. Had more knockouts than I had fights, 40-plus fights. I think he'd lost two or three. Uh, only ever stopped once on his feet against Gregory Droz. I think, going into the fight, I think I was the underdog. Uh, and I came through, nearly stopped him in the final in 12th round. A pivotal moment in my career. Both hands smashed in the fight. Both eyes nearly closed. But I became European champion. I actually did. I was happy if that was the ceiling of my career at the time. I always dreamed of being world champion and chased it. But I'd had two previous attempts failed. I mean, I thought I won one, obviously, against the Welshman. But I, I failed miserably in the second one against Adonis Stevenson. Uh, so... You know, I thought that might have been the end of it. And I thought this European title, British Commonwealth and European title is an amazing, amazing achievement. I thought if that's what I'm finishing with, I'm happy to finish with that. I've been ABA champion three times. I've been British Commonwealth and European champion. I've had a great career. Uh, it didn't work out like that because after I beat Matthias Masternach, Eddie and Barry walked into my dressing room and said, we promise you the next fight will be for the world title. Uh, and lo and behold, it was, mate. It was me, Jim Knight, at Goodison Park. I've been asked to do auditions for a few, which I've rejected. I've uh, I've done a few little bits and bobs, programs and stuff. Uh, I would consider it. So yes, I, I suppose I would. But I'm I'm actively seeking a role now. But if one comes up, then I then I'll take it. Mike Tyson's my hero, mate. So I'll never degrade them or disrespect them. I idolise Mike Tyson. The man's a fucking living legend. So. I love him, man. I love Roy Jones Jr. as well. I've had the pleasure of having dinner with Mike Tyson. I've had the pleasure of sitting down over a number of times with Roy Jones Jr. To, to even think that they know who I am is, is, is mind-boggling. You know, Roy Jones Jr., in my opinion, is the greatest fighter to have ever laced up gloves. A prime Roy Jones Jr. is the greatest thing I've ever seen in boxing gloves. He's just 
so equal in offense and defense. Just an amazing, amazing fighter. He had everything. Mike Tyson is, is in my opinion, the most vicious and ruthless heavyweight the world's ever seen. A prime Mike Tyson. So yes, it's not happening in both the primes, but I'm not gonna, you know, ideally, I, I don't really, I'm not happy that it's happening, but I'm, I'm supporting them both. And I actually, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I want to see it. I don't care if they were fucking both sixty. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay to watch it, one hundred percent. I'm sorry, people don't really agree with that or whatever have you, but I'm gonna watch it, mate. It's Mike fucking Tyson and it's Roy Jones Jr. For fuck's sake, they could both be in slippers and pajamas. I'm still paying. Fair piece. <laughs> All the treadmill sprints. Take your pick. Don't get me wrong. I actually still do burpees when the missus makes me do a fucking circuit to help her out with the fitness and stuff. Uh, but I absolutely despise them. They knock me sick. My knees just can't take the bounce down no more. And uh, treadmill sprints, I do not take part in them. So fuck you, treadmill sprints. Baz is my mate, lad. He's just some of the free kicks over the years. He's been amazing. He's been... It's right up there with... Seamus Coleman, Tim Cale, Leighton Baines, Everton's greatest ever buys. <laughs> just it's that good, mate. It really is. The years where Sylvan Distan, Phil Jagielka, them lads, amazing buys, acquisitions to the team, bought into the ethos of Everton Football Club, loved playing for Everton, knew what it meant. The old school generation, they're not from the old days of the fucking the kids now of constantly on the phones and fucking social media. They come through an edit of just what it meant to play for Everton. I think that's being lost somewhere along the fabric of being an Evertonian is being lost slowly but surely. Uh, it's just a modern day generation of the way things are, but them boys are, are, are the last of a very few. One of the toughest things I've ever done mentally. Physically sound, mentally absolutely mind-fucking. I fight for the heavyweight championship of the world against the small heavyweight. <laughs> Take your pick who that is, I don't care, but... Fighting for the world heavyweight title against a small heavyweight. Potentially a little fat one from Mexico. Guys, thank you very much for your questions. You're watching Matchroom social media. Thank you. I tried to answer them as best as I could. And it's honesty as fucking always.